and I go by the name of Bai Moses or it's Bai Mo on every social media platform. And yesterday I heard a story that really broke my heart. Somebody committed suicide because they couldn't settle a debt for 3,000. People are depressed, people are stressed, and uh, my strength of a woman of the day is here to share a story just to tell you that you can pick up yourself and transform your life forever. From being ex expelled in high school to going to prison, and now she's here almost completing a bachelor's degree in education. She goes by the name Eliza Karibusana. Asante. Mm -hmm. So your camera is number four. Uh, the drill in Akwanga, unaji introduce na credentials zako zote and what work would you So look at them straight into the eyes and tell them where Eliza is. Good morning, everybody. Mm -hmm. My name is Eliza Beatriz Irimo Moreo, mm -hmm. a mother of two, a wife, a student, and a brother of the Faraja Foundation. Mm -hmm. And the next convict who today fights for the rights of the prisoners mm -hmm. to let the world know that. Whatever they've done, it mm -hmm. is just but a mystic, but they are human beings. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it is a circumstance. You find yourself in circumstances. Yes. All right, how are the kids doing? They're fine. Uh -huh. I know somebody's watching. Uh -huh. They're watching. I know. All right, they're watching. Mm -hmm. And uh, gr their granddad is watching as well. Yeah. All right, to, to me, I shout out. All right, so uh, your story is very interesting. And you've been through a lot. And you've seen a lot. And you put a brief face through it. Sure. Uh, I'd like to take you back to to, to high school. <laughs> wow. Wow, that's an interesting part of my life. Mm -hmm. I was uh, after I scored 406 mm -hmm. at uh, Kasoko PC Academy. Mm -hmm. I was admitted to, I think I had an admission letter for three schools. Mm -hmm. Karema Girls, Bahati and Naivasha. Mm -hmm. And uh, I chose just okay. just hold the mic uh, like this. Uh, I chose Nivasha girls mm -hmm. and or Bahati over Karema because I felt like Karema was too near home. Mm -hmm. But they were all b performing schools. Mm -hmm. And uh, my dad insisted I just join Karema mm -hmm. because my sister had been there and mm -hmm. she performed well. Mm -hmm. So he promised me that once you go there and you do your best, mm -hmm. we'll take you to a, yeah, the, the school the, of your the choice. The lies still. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> All right, don't call them lies. Uh -huh. I believe they, like, uh, they want us to. They want us to like agree to what they want us to do. Mm -hmm. So I joined Karima Girls, mm -hmm. but at the back of my mind, I had that notion that Dad is going to transfer me from this school. Mm -hmm. So I worked hard. Mm -hmm. I think uh, throughout my form one, I, I wasn't a straight A student. Mm -hmm. Uh, believing that this is going to warm my dad into giving me what I want. Mm -hmm. In Form 2, mm -hmm. I transferred. Right, before you go to Form 1, uh, you sat your KCPE. Yeah. All right, so they wanted you to go to Kerima Girls. Mm -hmm. uh, just uh, how much was the fare from where you live into Kerima Girls? So people can get a picture. Uh, you know, uh, coming from Nyandaro, just with uh, these Chulaga buses, it uh -huh. was that Bob back That's then. Bob. Yes. All right, and how many marks <laughs> did you score in primary? 406. 406 marks yeah. out of 500. Sure. And then they want you to go to a school that is 30 shillings away from home. Okay, that, okay I think that was a childish argument. Uh, yes, yes. I, I'm getting into <laughs> a head of a class 8, a person who's 16 and f or 15 was good uh, 406 marks because I was at, at that stage as well and at that particular point you always had an ambition of going to school somewhere mm -hmm. and going to a big school but then again things just happen life happens and you can't seem to come to an understanding with your parents at that particular point because you're a kid okay how mm -hmm. would they pay 150 going to a primary school where I was a boarder uh -huh. and it is high school so I expected to go to be upgrade in uh -huh. everything right, even right, in the I fair payment point. I guess you should point. Uh -huh. yeah. Yes. All right, so you go to Karima Girls. Uh, how was your performance in Form 1? Excellent. Uh -huh. Excellent performance. Yes, I was uh -huh. a straight A student uh -huh. in, Form, in one. Form 1. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I never missed the Achievers trips. Wow. Oh, you used to go to Achievers mm -hmm. trips. All right, at what point do you get expelled? A straight A student, you were one of the best in uh, KCP, I bet, uh, the, the lot that was taken in your year. Uh, how do you get to this point? I believe it was even a shock to everybody, mm -hmm. the school and even my parents. I transformed from the good girl mm -hmm. to a complete bad girl. Mm -hmm. I would fight, mm -hmm. steal, do all kind of all manner of things just to earn myself an expulsion. Mm -hmm. 
and I think it paid off because I was expelled. Because you were ex expelled. Because I felt self destruction. Like, you wanted to self distract. I wanted to like leave this place. Uh -huh. I don't want to be here, so I had to do something to get out of that place. Mm -hmm. I never settled. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So you get expelled in the long run. Then you go back home. I get back home. Mm -hmm. You see, like where I come from, education was not that serious back then, mm -hmm. unlike today. Mm -hmm. So many girls were like were being given examples that you just have to be Eliza, you just have to be like this girl, she has done it. So when I get home and um, here I am expelled. So you can imagine the bitterness with my parents. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also felt guilty in a way. Mm -hmm. So I ran away from home mm -hmm. and I went to my sister's place in mm -hmm. Embo. Mm -hmm. And I stayed there for some time. And she was also not happy. Mm -hmm. She's my eldest sister whom I respect so much up to date. Mm -hmm. And uh, she even paid my school fees when I was joining Form 1 because mm -hmm. my dad retired when I was in class 8 second term. Mm -hmm. So you see, this is, um, mm -hmm. there's no money at home. So my sister had to chip in. Mm -hmm. And um, when I went there, she wasn't happy with me. Mm -hmm. You had become a menace to society. Uh, last hey, born. <laughs> the last born now. Uh -huh. who, um, everybody had high hopes. Uh -huh. She's now the bad girl now. Uh -huh. Wow. All right. So uh, from living with your sister, what happens next? Uh, at my sister's place, I get there. She's not happy with me. Uh -huh. And um, then I find it. Then she got transferred from Embu to Nairobi. But uh -huh. before then, uh -huh. I had also ran away from her house too. All right. Because I felt this is not the place I want to be. Uh -huh. It is not hospitable. Uh -huh. I don't want to see there her There was hurting. a lot of tension. Yes. And she's hurting. Mm -hmm. And she can't believe you're doing what you're doing. Yes. All right. So you ran away. Where do you go to after you ran away from your sisters? Uh, so I was just there roaming in the streets. Uh -huh. And nowhere uh -huh. to go. I'm just there. Uh -huh. Then there was this guy. He was a colleague to my sister. Uh -huh. He gets me to the streets and be like, ah, everybody, home at Unita Betty. They call uh -huh. me Betty. Uh -huh. So, Betty, what are you doing in the streets? And then I explain my station to him. And he, for the first time, I see somebody who is listening. Uh -huh. he, was, uh, he was so good, caring. How old are you at this time again? Uh, but then I, I had just turned 16. You just turned 16? Yes. So, you were very naive, I bet. Very. All right. Very. Uh -huh. So this guy gets me to his house. He's so nice. Gives me a place to lay, to live. He gives me a change of clothes, mm -hmm. and uh, I felt good and I felt loved for the first time. Mm -hmm. But now the village girl in me did not know that everything comes with a price. Mm -hmm. With time, this guy started sleeping with me, mm -hmm. and uh, so I didn't know anything about the e pills, mm -hmm. contraceptives, and I got pregnant. Mm -hmm. At what age again? 16. At 16 still? Yes. Things happen so fast. Yeah. In this one year, mm -hmm. you have been expelled, you've uh, gone home, you've gone to your sisters, you've left your sisters, uh, you've gotten pregnant in a span of one year. Yes. At 16. What do you do next? Hmm. So this guy is like, he took responsibility. Uh -huh. To an extent, he introduced me to his family, mm -hmm. and they too are welcoming. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, but it wasn't easy. We would mm -hmm. quarrel here and there because at least those are much age difference. Uh -huh. He was mature. He's a graduate here. I am a form to drop out, uh -huh. and uh, pregnant with uh -huh. a lot of bitterness because I felt like my dreams are shattered. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. All right. <laughs> this is. What happens next? Mm, the guy also gets a transfer to Nairobi. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the time I think I was around eight months pregnant. Mm -hmm. So one day he gets home drunk. Mm -hmm. And just like the way we used to do, mm -hmm. we fight. Mm -hmm. I am so injured. you guys were in, a, in an abusive relationship? Okay, I would say that it was abusive per mm -hmm. se. But this guy was like, he wasn't that friendly to me. It was mm -hmm. no, when I was uh, from there. He changed mm -hmm. somehow. And he didn't treat me the way he used to. Because you see, that this is not a person that uh, we've dated. Uh -huh. This is a person that who just picked me from streets. Uh -huh. He shopped for By me. By the virtue of knowing your sister mm -hmm. and seeing your, a familiar face. Yes. And trying to help. And things just happened. Yes. And then, so this guy changes. You are living in Nairobi now. You've moved from Embo to Nairobi. Yes. You are still 16. Uh-huh. But it's Jeffica 17. In one year. Yes. Pregnant. In the big city. 
mm-hmm. with a man. <laughs> <laughs> with a man. All right. What happens? So here I am. Uh-huh. One day he came home. Uh-huh. It had been an eventful day. Uh-huh. Then I was running in the hospital. He's out there with uh, the boys and his uh, brothers. Mm, you're heavy. Yes, I, 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 I was just three weeks to mm. my EDD. Wow. Then we get home. Mm. We, f- he, we fight and uh, unfortunately, he's <laughs> fatally injured. Uh-huh. Fatally injured. Yes. What happened to you before he gets fatally injured? I want people to get a picture of what happened that night. Oh yeah, uh, we were in communication, yes, uh-huh. and uh, around 8 p.m. I had gone to Moja Hospital, mm-hmm. I was treated, mm-hmm. then he was also there, out there. they had oh, well, to make deals mm-hmm. with the brothers and there was a birthday party somewhere, mm-hmm. so he gets home, mm-hmm. he demands for food which he had not even cooked. Because mm-hmm. you had been running around mm-hmm. and then I was going to weak. the hospital. Yes, yeah, I am a 16 year old, mm-hmm. heavily mm-hmm. pregnant and someone is unwell. Mm-hmm. Yes, so when he came home, he demanded for food, we had a misunderstanding and we fought. Mm-hmm. That's where he was injured. I also, I also have my injuries. Mm-hmm. There is a scar here. Uh, well, well, what caused the, the injury? Um, he stabbed me with a knife. It was a stab wound? Yeah. How many times did you get stabbed that night? Twice. You got stabbed twice? Yes. All right. How many times did you get stabbed? Mm, I think once, but uh-huh. it was a... Uh, okay. It was not really at a strategic place, uh-huh. Uh-huh. if there is anything like that. It was a, a big mistake. It was a big mistake because uh-huh. he was drunk. Uh-huh. And um, there's a lot of... The, I think uh, people who are drunk, they're like, there is a high... Uh-huh. When alcohol is in you, I think there is a, the blood pressure is high somehow. Okay, yeah. so the blood gushed out. Yes. After he's stabbed. What do you do after after he's stabbed? And, you and can uh, see on top of that, uh-huh. I think uh, he also bur- he, he used to smoke uh-huh. and he burnt his front shirt. The front part of him got burnt. Uh-huh. And, uh, okay, it's a picture that I really don't want to All right, get. you don't really want to get into it. All right, yeah. you get arrested after this. Yeah, All these things happen. You, the police come on that particular night. Okay, I was calling for help. Mm-hmm. I even called a sister who was living just a few blocks from where we were. Mm-hmm. They came, they helped us. Mm-hmm. And um, when they came, two things happened. Mm-hmm. The girl was taken to the hospital. I was taken to Buruburu Police Station. And that is how the night was concluded? No, that is how the night got concluded. Hospital, jail cell. Yes. Wow. White54 underscore channel on Instagram and White54 on Facebook and White54 channel on Twitter is the way to interact with us. This is Strength of a Woman. Uh, keep your views, your comments and uh, questions coming our way. We are with Elisa, who is an ex-con and an activist, and she has uh, changed her life for the better. Stay tuned. All right. So uh, you end up in a jail cell. You're 16. Who is the first person you call? Uh, my brother. Uh-huh. I called him. He where, came. Is he, where is he at that time? He was living somewhere at Karubangi South. Mm-hmm. So he came to Buruburu and I explained to him. But then the guy had not passed on. Uh-huh. He was still in hospital. Mm-hmm. And now my brother communicated to my larger family now. Mm-hmm. So they were informed and uh, I thank God they give me the necessary support that I needed back then. Mm-hmm. They would visit me, they would come and encourage me. Then uh, after three days, mm-hmm. that was when the news was broken to me. Mm-hmm. The guy had passed on. Mm-hmm. It was sad. It was sad, because the charges had changed now. No, yes. The charges From attempted are, to yeah. actual murder now. First degree. First degree murder. Yes. And you never imagined your night ending like that, when you walk into the hospital and back home. Yes. It was even something that I had, I had not even foreseen. Mm-hmm. It is bad. No, here I am. Mm-hmm. I'm confused. I don't know how I'm going to raise this baby that I'm about to give birth to. Mm-hmm. I am not educated uh, back then. Mm-hmm. I have no education. I couldn't seek for a job. And uh, so many things are happening back. Wow. Let's talk about your experience in prison. But mm-hmm. before we talk about the experience, how is it? You, I'm guessing you gave birth in, in remand. Yes. 
How is it raising a baby in prison and how did it work out for mm. you? Okay, I was taken to the hospital KNH, uh -huh. heavily guarded uh -huh. as a capital offender. Uh -huh. You just have to be escorted mm -hmm. and not just escorted, heavily guarded. Heavily guarded? Yes. You're even wondering why they're guarding you like that. Hey. In your head, you're not even you a know, dangerous person. <laughs> oh, okay, I was wondering why even I'm walking here, uh -huh. I can't even run. Uh -huh. Three officers behind me, uh -huh. and one has a gun. So Scam. it was scary. Uh -huh. It was very, very, very bad, and uh -huh. it wasn't the best experience. It wasn't the best. But so anyway, you give birth at KNH. Yeah. Uh, you spend some time at KNH, and then you go back to remand. You go back to remand with your baby. With your baby. Mm -hmm. um, you're secluded for the first three months. Mm -hmm. You're given a special place, but mm -hmm. that special place is <laughs> it's funny because mm -hmm. the room that you are staying there with your newborn babies, mm -hmm. the next room mm -hmm. are the isolated TB, the uh, TB patients. So you can imagine mm -hmm. you have a newborn baby here, and the next room there are people recuperating from TB. But so you survived through all this. The yes. baby survived through all this. Yes, yeah, the baby survived through all this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he's a big boy now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's a big boy now, mm -hmm. uh, 11 years of age. Yeah, and his birthday is just next week. Son, I know you're watching. Happy <laughs> birthday, Nadi <laughs> Vans. <laughs> Happy birthday. All right, so uh, in prison now, mm -hmm. uh, how, how was life like in prison? Well, it was tough. Uh -huh. Because the first days, mm -hmm. you get through, okay, you get a lot of stress. Uh -huh. This is the first phase. The first phase. is depression. Depression. Mm -hmm. Because you're like, how did they end up here? Mm -hmm. You're even bitter and angry at yourself. Mm -hmm. Self-hatred. Yeah, angry at mm -hmm. anybody who just let everything happen. You're even mm -hmm. angry at God because why was this God and everything was happening? Mm -hmm. Why could he not save you from all this? Mm -hmm. So it is just a very, very, okay, traumatizing phase of it. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, you, you know, after that, you get to the beginning part of it. Mm -hmm. You're beginning like, I wish I did this. I wouldn't have ended up here. Mm -hmm. I, I wish, wish I, I listened to so-and-so. Yeah, I wish I just listened to so-and-so. I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I just wish like, uh, I stayed put in Karima Girls. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. I just wish I didn't run away from home. Mm -hmm. Nisadia Kulima, I wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. You begin a lot. Mm -hmm. Then it This is the second phase The now. second phase. Uh, the, what is the third phase? The third phase is like acceptance you're starting to accept no you accept yourself where you are uh -huh. no and start working the way forward uh -huh. yes because you also need to defend yourself around here yes you need to be strong you need uh -huh. to survive sure so this is when you realize all these things need to happen and you accept yes. whatever is happening to you yes all right when you got to the to the acceptance stage your, st your trial is still going on Yes, uh -huh. it actually it had not even started. My uh -huh. trial started one year late. Uh -huh. I would just get there and I'm told there were no witnesses. Uh -huh. um, the judge is not there. Uh -huh. You get there, the, the, the court list, the, it's called the, I think the court list. The uh -huh. court list is full. Uh -huh. They don't have time to listen to your case. Uh -huh. So it is just dragged like uh, near. Uh -huh. That is when it started. Uh -huh. Yes. All right, and you, I'm guessing you met a lot of people in prison during your experience in prison. Uh, in prison, uh -huh. people think it is just for the irritate. No. Uh -huh. There is the young, the old. Uh -huh. Diversity. There's diversity. Uh -huh. The elite, uh -huh. the semi-irritate, uh -huh. the complete illiterate. Uh -huh. They're there. They're there. You met all these kinds of people. Yes. All right. Uh, and were there people around your age also in prison? I remember in prison, like I had to hide my age uh -huh. for the fear of being bullied, uh -huh. because I wouldn't tell them that uh, I was an underage. Uh -huh. No, because I had to be treated like an adult because mm -hmm. I had a baby. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that baby, our my trial could be continuing when I was in a Boston in institution, uh -huh. the juvenile prison. Uh -huh. But no, here I am in an adult in an adult institution, mm -hmm. so I had to be treated like one. Mm -hmm. So this is because you were accused of a capital offense. Not p not really, uh -huh. but because of my age. Uh -huh. Yes, if right. there are capital offenders in other Boston institutions, uh -huh. and uh, they are not taken in prison. In the the like Langata or committee, uh -huh. there are those juvenile institutions that we have around Nairobi. Uh -huh. 
but for me because of my pregnancy and now having a baby mm-hmm. i couldn't go there mm-hmm. so i had to be taken to an adult correctional you facility you had to grow up really fast yeah yes mm-hmm. having a baby at 16 going to a grown prison mm-hmm. uh, what are they called the prisons for the older people for okay, the, the legal people <laughs> no it's just a main prison mm-hmm. the those boston institutions are for the 18 years and below 18 years and below yes All right so you had to really grow up uh, first Yes, circumstances right. forced me. In to. the long run, you were found not guilty. Yeah. Yes, and I was set free. Remember, the judge he just dismissed me like this and like, how old is your son? I don't mean standing three. Go bring up your son and go back to school. He told me that. Wow, this was a turn of events for you and it, your family. It was. Uh-huh. It was. Did you shed tears? I think I wept. <laughs> you wept at that time. I remember when I had the judge say that I have no put you at liberty. I don't think I had anything else from that because <laughs> I just remember screaming. My uh-huh. dad was there seated in the courtroom. Dad was in Yachoku. I felt like he's going to leave me. Uh-huh. And I be taken back. Uh-huh. Yes. Wow. So uh what people might not be understanding, you spent like three years in prison, but you were found not guilty. Uh How come you're in prison but you were found not guilty? Uh in prison there are two segments. Uh-huh. There is the main prison where those people who are serving sentence, the already convicted prisoners are mm-hmm. and there is mm-hmm. the remand. Mm-hmm. And the remand has two sections, mm-hmm. the capital remand and an ordinary remand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I hear you're innocent until proven guilty. This does not work in the in our system. Mhm. You have to be there. Uh-huh. For especially for capital. <coughs> Sorry. Uh-huh. All right. So you have to be remanded while the trial is going on. Yes. All right. You're set free. Uh what happens next? Do you go back home to your parents or to your sister? To my parents. Mhm. It was an experience. Mhm. A tear experience at that. Mhm. Going home. Mhm. You know people used to like talk so much things mm-hmm. about those people in prison. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of stigma. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. When I was getting home, mm-hmm. back then mm-hmm. we had matatus mm-hmm. that was taking us the okay they would be like hourly. Mhm. To like asa 10, mhm. Yes, asita. Mhm. So they already knew at what time I was getting home. Mm-hmm. I met a crowd mm-hmm. shopping center they were waiting for there for me and they were shocked when they saw me mm-hmm. they expected somebody is like weak mm-hmm. malnutritioned mm-hmm. but i was very beautiful mm-hmm. strong so beautiful today yes mm-hmm. and they were like what they mm-hmm. were shocked mm-hmm. really shocked mm-hmm. because like people have this at the back of their mind they believe that people in prison mm-hmm. they're not well fed mm-hmm. they're not well taken care of mm-hmm. And they are dirty, uh-huh. shaggy, uh-huh. but that is not the case. Uh-huh. No, uh-huh. people in prison they do bath. Uh-huh. In Rangata, we used to do we used to do our hairs. Uh-huh. Uh, social activities, social games. activities, games. Uh-huh. I was, I we even have Miss Langata now. Yes, uh-huh. Alice Kamande. Uh-huh. 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 There are activities there. Uh-huh. We used to play. Uh-huh. Okay, we get into prison. Uh-huh. Activities, games, activities like well. acting the mm-hmm. choirs sakata things mm-hmm. and there's so many activities going so on so before we go to what you did after after prison what is that biggest lesson you learned from living in prison i know let nelson mandela say his biggest lesson was that he could self reflect because in a prison cell you don't talk to anybody you, all you have are your thoughts you could self reflect and uh have conversations with himself so much and it made him realize so many things about himself what it, what was that big lesson for you uh for me i mm-hmm. learned to appreciate freedom mm-hmm. freedom is expensive mm-hmm. there you can just walk from your house mm-hmm. to that shop downstairs and buy yourself mm-hmm. anything mm-hmm. they just decide that today i'm mm-hmm. not going anywhere i'll mm-hmm. stay indoors mm-hmm. today i'll go that and part to decide the power to decide you know prison is one place that no is not an answer uh-huh. 
walk this way. <laughs> you walk. You walk. Jump. Jump. How you jump. High? Have lunch. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> No is not an answer, uh -huh. and it is not an option. So you learn to appreciate freedom so much. Yes, and even those little things in life. Like today, uh -huh. you just walk, walk somewhere, and like, you just don't like something like as little as a TP, tissue uh -huh. paper. Uh -huh. That is something that is not of much importance to us, uh -huh. but I learned to appreciate those minute things in life. Uh -huh. Because there are those times that I would run over out of it. Uh -huh. And I would borrow from, from a friend, uh -huh. who in turn like, feels like, I have idea sana. Uh -huh. So those small things in life which mm -hmm. are, which seem to be meaningless, mm -hmm. I learned to appreciate them. Mm -hmm. And then I learned to utilize every minute that I have. Mm -hmm. Every moment of my life, mm -hmm. I utilize it positive. Because back there, mm -hmm. we used to do a lot of things. So mm -hmm. after I went through counseling, mm -hmm. now to accept myself while there. Mm -hmm. Counseling is pre being released or after being released? Okay, even when you get into prison. Uh -huh. Or you meet counselors. They you go. meet counselors there. Right. Yeah. So uh -huh. that, okay, you know, it is dramatic. It is a very quick, dramatic turn of event of your life. Uh -huh. so and this is a place to reform people, not yes, to punish them. Not to punish them. Mm -hmm. So you get counseled, you accept your station, mm -hmm. and there are so many courses that go in there. Mm -hmm. I used to paint, mm -hmm. beadwork, mm -hmm. every opportunity that came by. I used to read a 400 page novel within mm -hmm. two days mm -hmm. because it just wanted to keep, to keep my mind occupied. Mm -hmm. And I think that's when I developed a, a, a passion for teaching mm -hmm. because no, I, after one year, my mm -hmm. mom came and picked my son. Mm -hmm. So I was left all alone there. I mm -hmm. don't have a now a baby to look after. Mm -hmm. So I used to know my energy to do something else. The prisoners there, the, those who did not know, even the simplest concept of education, mm -hmm. A, A, E, O, O. Mm -hmm. So we would take them with a certain lady. Mm -hmm. We would go, teach them. Imagine teaching a 50-old ear, mm -hmm. granny, the vowels. <laughs> wow. It was such an experience. Yes. And this is how you developed a passion for teaching. Yes. Just and, uh, seeing somebody <laughs> come from knowing nothing to at least expressing themselves. And uh, uh -huh. the, the inspiration would be like, this person after knowing how to read, uh -huh. the only book they would read was the Bible. Uh -huh. Yes, because Bibles are in plenty there. Uh -huh. They are given free. Uh -huh. Yes. All right. And this is somewhere you also got in touch with your spiritual side. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, you're a very prayerful person now. Yes. How does this help you find the, the balance in your life, religion and prayer? Yes, okay, it has helped me overcome. I feel like whenever I pray, mm -hmm. I release some of the burdens that I have. Mm -hmm. It has been a tough life mm -hmm. up to date, mm -hmm. but I believe that all my battles, mm -hmm. they are won on my knees. All right. From going to high school facing stigma, because you told me everybody in your school knew the story okay. in the long run. Now you're in campus in your third year, uh, by the way, about to finish your bachelor's degree. Uh, how have you managed to cope with the stigma? Because it's not easy not to look at you different. Okay, I think the only thing that uh, I was lucky is when I, I was released. Uh -huh. When I was released, I just went home and stayed for maybe a month. Mm -hmm and then went back to school. Mm -hmm. The challenge that we have today with our prisoners whenever mm -hmm. they go home, mm -hmm. people have the, this misconception that when a prisoner gets home, mm -hmm. gets into prison, mm -hmm. they get hardened. Mm -hmm. No. Mm -hmm. The only problem comes when they reintegrate back to the society. Mm -hmm. The stigma itself, mm -hmm. it's so rave. Mm -hmm. So when they, they get home, mm -hmm. they're not welcomed easily. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because everybody um, uh, has labeled you at the back of mm -hmm. that this is a person who is this is a dangerous person. Uh -huh. This is an ex-convict. Yes. So this is not. A, uh -huh. So you find uh, even your family is not welcoming, mm -hmm. and uh, the society at large mm -hmm. views you differently, mm -hmm. and there is no one who wants to associate with you. Mm -hmm. So the only are talking about you mm -hmm. behind your back. The only people who would uh, you fit, mm -hmm. they are those people who are the bad persons. The, mm -hmm. the the bad company, the mm -hmm. thieves, mm -hmm. those ones, they'll take you because you'll be like a mentor to mm -hmm. them. Mm -hmm. Because they believe that with the experience in prison, mm -hmm. 
You'll teach them how to stay away from police, mm -hmm. to devise new tactics. So they are also so associating with you for their own personal mm -hmm. gain. Yes. And uh, with that, you find yourself with the wrong company once more. Mm -hmm. And you find yourself back to prison. Mm -hmm. But had you been, had this person's been uh, received well, mm -hmm. given the necessary accommodation, mm -hmm. the family to receive them with love, mm -hmm. I believe the current prisons, mm -hmm. we actually don't refer them as prisons nowadays. Mm -hmm. We call them the correctional facilities. Mm -hmm. Because there are so many things which are going, there are so many skills which are people are being mm -hmm. given. And uh, once they get out, mm -hmm they can utilize them for the benefit of the society mm -hmm. and for their own gain. All right. It's not easy to share your story like this, especially a story like this one on national TV. Uh, what are you, what is your goal with this? What are you planning to achieve with share, by sharing your story? I always believe that prevention is better than cure. Mm -hmm. So these people who believe that you know, there are those things that you, I believe you've had to, uh, you mm. have gone somewhere mm. and you had people that, Nini unawagopa ita polisi, unafikia tanipeleka wapi? My friend, <laughs> we'll call the police. <laughs> but uh -huh. the moment that you get in their snare, uh -huh. it's not easy to get out. Uh -huh. So I believe that youths can stay away from crime. Uh -huh. There are better ways to solve problems. There are better ways to solve problems and mm -hmm. even those people who feel like I need I have an outburst mm -hmm. I am depressed mm -hmm. speak mm -hmm. let it out mm -hmm. let people know what you're going through mm -hmm. because there will come a time that you'll get to a point of saturation mm -hmm. you'll take no more uh -huh. and you're going to react and uh -huh. the reaction will be negative so it's better to speak and let it out speak and let it Don't out let things cloud inside you yes that and is a lesson that you teach people uh, yes All right and as parents mm -hmm. Let's not dictate to our children. Mm -hmm. I want you to be a teacher, whereas mm -hmm. the son wants to be a DJ. Mm -hmm. Sit them, engage in dialogue. Mm -hmm. Let this, uh, this person tell you the pros and the cons mm -hmm. of what you are about Get to do. Get to an understanding. Get, Get to an understanding. Agree area. Yes, mm -hmm. agree. And mm -hmm. then from there you can find a way forward. Because had I sat down with my dad and just talked like, Dad, this is, this is what mm -hmm. I want. And... Uh, this is what uh, maybe I really wanted to do. Maybe mm -hmm. probably could not have gone through all that. Mm -hmm. And I know that my dad, the person that I know him to be, mm -hmm. he we would have agreed. But to mm -hmm. say, no, here I am. I have that fear of my parents. Mm -hmm. And I want to respect them. Mm -hmm. I want to do what they want, mm -hmm. but not what I really want. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, I cannot pretend that all through. Mm -hmm. It will come to a time that the person is going to, to be seen, to, uh -huh. the, to come out. Uh -huh. Yes. Wow. And the reality now be seen. Mm -hmm. And the turn of when it comes to that, the turn of events it's never positive. Mm -hmm. You create problems by running away from others. Mm -hmm. And when you run away from a small problem, you create a bigger one. Mm -hmm. Yes. So always face your problems, solve them. Yes. Speak out. Don't let your problems cloud inside. E uh, the f final outburst might be very dangerous. Yeah or even fatal sometimes. Sure. Right. And uh, also uh, avoid, just avoid certain situations. Sure. These things are avoidable. Wow. You are going to be a teacher in a few years. Yes. Uh, what are you going to be specializing in? Mathematics and chemistry. <laughs> mathematics and chemistry. Yes. Why did you pick mathematics and chemistry? Uh -huh. I believe that uh, I wanted to be a, an engineer. Uh -huh. And I believe that when I get in class, I'll make engineers. Uh -huh. So yes. you're going to channel that passion uh, through teaching them mathematics and chemistry yes. and make them better people. And also, I'm, I, I love interacting with the youths uh -huh. to talk to them. Uh -huh. And it uh, feels good to me. It uh -huh. satisfies me when I see somebody walking in a wrong direction and then changes. Uh -huh. And then I also work with the youths to sensitize people on the importance of helping people from the correctional facility uh -huh. reintegrate properly in, uh -huh. in the society. Uh -huh. And I also tell people that these people in prison, mm -hmm. they are not less human beings. Mm -hmm. They are not less Kenyans. Mm -hmm. They just made a mistake. Mm -hmm. And some of them were circumstances. They just found themselves in circumstances. I also believe you've made a mistake and mm -hmm. you'll be like, hey, mm -hmm. it's only that the so law has not, times. it's not that, the, it's only that the law has not caught up with you. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes, everybody is a potential 
client uh -huh. to the prison. Uh -huh. Let's stop pointing fingers at them. Let us support them. Uh -huh. They need us. Uh -huh. For them to f to come back and not mm -hmm. to cause another menace, mm -hmm. they need our love. Mm -hmm. They need just the support. Mm -hmm. That is all they need. And also, it's the high time people came out and like they support those people in prison. Mm -hmm. Like um, today, working with Faraja Foundation, mm -hmm. Faraja has done extremely, extremely a lot for the prisoners in Kenya. Mm -hmm. They give counseling. Mm -hmm. They've given that total transformation to the prison. Scholarships as well. Schol yes, I was mm -hmm. under their scholarship, by mm -hmm. the way, mm -hmm. after prison. Mm -hmm. And they do a lot of things. Like when you go to Rangata today, mm -hmm. you just get inside there. Mm -hmm. You wonder what really, okay, you just like, is this one really a prison? Mm -hmm. Because they believe they have given them the the humane the treatment the treatment they deserve. they deserve. They've mm -hmm. made their, their rehabilitation process mm -hmm very humane and bearable wonderful as we come to the end of this uh it's not easy going through what you went through and i'm pretty sure there are people you met along the way that really gave you support yeah. for to me a shout out just look them straight into the eyes number <laughs> four uh okay so how are you going to what i've got for the next interview <laughs> okay dad i know you're watching uh -huh. i love you so much dad I mm -hmm. could not be where I am today. Mm -hmm. I didn't for your support and love. Mm -hmm. I know my son is watching. Happy birthday, son, once more. I love you so much. You are my inspiration, and I'm always proud of you. Ken, wherever you are, I just love you so much. And I believe that with your support, I'll be able to walk through this. My family, my mom, my sisters, Thank you so much. There's another lady. Mm -hmm. She's a uh, Grace Mithika, Mudike. Mm -hmm. Wherever you are, Salimiko ni ambeni kikuja ni kupe shout out. The whole of uh, Mesa Foundation. Thank you for the channel that you people give. The Faraja Fraternity. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for this wonderful chance you've given me to represent you there as a brand ambassador. I'm proud of you for whatever you do. And uh, everybody there. Mm -hmm. who has made my life bearable mm -hmm. anybody there who has made me whom i am today mm -hmm. thank you thank you thank you so much mm -hmm. and uh when you're in tessa nikiwa high school when you're in your casting and you know jacket when you're in my game kitanda i forgive you all <laughs> Thank you very much, Beatrice, for coming through to Y in the morning. You're a true strength of woman. You're a true strong woman right here. And we appreciate you so much. Keep doing what you're doing for the ex-convict and the convict and humans in general. We appreciate you. you. We have come to the end of Strength of a Woman. And uh, be sure uh, to catch it on YouTube later on if you miss this. Or the repeat will be at 2 p.m. I go by the name of Baimosis or It's by on every social media platform. Kalami Valley is coming up next with Girls Talk. And you can ask whatever you want to ask on this next segment. Don't go nowhere.